Well, howdy there, Internet students. Mr. Hermanson again. Hey, um, today we are going to try and figure out um, what happens with the area when we have a scale factor, when we use a scale factor on, on different figures. And um, so we're going to do a little studying here. Um, let's, uh, just to make this a little bit easier on you, um, let's say that the dimensions of this one are 2 and 5, so maybe 2 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Okay. And um, we're going to double those dimensions, so we're going to make it twice as long, so about uh, 10 centimeters long and about 4 centimeters high. All right. Um, so our scale factor is 2 because we doubled both the length and the width. And the area, um, what we want to do is figure out what the area scale factor is. So we're going to do 2 times 5 to get this area, which is 10. And then we're going to do 4 times 10 to get this area, which is 40. And I'm going to divide those two to get the scale factor, which is 4. Okay, so the area is four times bigger than the original. So why don't you try the next one, triple the dimensions. So instead of two by five with an area of 10, you're going to make one that is um, the length and width triple. Okay, so go ahead and fill in the chart and go ahead and do the next one too. Quadruple it, see what happens and see if you get the right answers. You should have found that when you tripled them, your area got 9 times bigger. And when you quadruple it, your areas get 16 times bigger. Just to show that, again, if you quadruple 2, you get 8 for the width. And if you quadruple 5, you get 20. And 8 times 20 is 160 for the area. The original area was 10. 160 divided by 10 equals 16. Um, do you, and so now look at these patterns, you guys. Um, could you have predicted what the area would be? Um, somewhere I've seen these numbers before. There's something going on there. See if you can figure out what that is. All right. Um, here's how I would say that, that the area factor... Maybe we call it factor, I'm not sure. But the area factor is whatever the scale factor is squared. Let's just use SF for the scale factor squared. So when the scale factor was 3, the area factor was 9. If the scale factor was 5, the area factor would be 25. Um, so that's the answer to the next problem. It would be 25 times, the area would be 25 times greater if, if you use the scale factor of 5. All right, um, so what happens to the area of a rectangle when we double the dimensions? Length and width. Um, so if we double this, you could tell there's six here, right? Um, so if we double the width and the length, we end up with this rectangle, right? And if you look closely and count them, you now have six by four, which is 24. So when you double your area, you do times four. Um, go ahead and fill in the other ones. Okay, if you triple the dimensions, the width and length, uh, the area becomes nine times greater. If you quadruple the dimensions, width and length, the area becomes 16 times larger. So, um, so so on problem number six, the original area was six. Uh, the scale factor was 2, and the area was 24, which is 4 times greater. On problem number 7, the original area was 6, the scale factor was 3, the area was 54, which is 9 times greater. And scale factor 4, 
we had an area 96 with its, which is 16 times greater. So we see that same pattern. All right, is the pattern the same as the first pattern? Yes. Um, rectangles A and B are mathematically similar. Their corresponding angles are equal in measure and their corresponding sides have a scale factor. Um, rectangle A, the width is 35 and the height is 54. Rectangle B, um, the height is 324. So um, you can either create, find the scale factor by dividing corresponding sides. So you could do 324 divided by 54 to figure out how many times longer this side is than this side or this side. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So 324 divided by 54 equals 6. So we can see that that side is 6 times greater. All right. And so now I can just take this dimension here, this 35, since I know these x will be 6 times that. I can just do 35 times 6. And that's 210. Um, so the scale factor from A to B, now remember we're going from a small to a big one, so it has to be more than one. So we're going to divide 324 by 54, which we already did, and we found out that that was 6. If we go from B to A, then we would do 54 divided by 324. Um, and simplify that. But if we know the scale factor is 6 going one way, then going the other way, it's just the reciprocal of that, which is 1 6. Okay? Um, so you get one, you get a scale factor greater than 1 when you're growing and less than 1 when you're shrinking. Okay? Now we're going to find the areas. So go ahead and do that. The area of rectangle A, you're going to do 54 times 35. And for rectangle B, you're going to do 210 times 324. Go ahead and find those areas. All right, so here's what I get. Um, now, to find out how many times larger one rectangle's area is compared to the other, to figure out a multiplication problem, how many times you divide. So we're going to take the bigger one, divide it by the smaller one. So 68,040 divided by 1890. And we find that it's 36 times greater. Now, I think some of you guys were thinking that because we knew that the scale factor was 6, and the area is going to be 6 times 6, or 6 to the squared times greater, which is 36. All right. Now, um, one more thing on why that makes sense. When you are doing area, you are changing two dimensions. So if I make this 6 times taller, this side six times taller, and make this side six times wider, then I have two dimensions that are times six. So it makes sense that I am making my area six times six times greater. All right. So uh, Sarah created a cartoon character of her school mascot, Felix, fighting fox for poster, a character shown at right. Um, make a ratio of her cartoon mask on drawings width to height. So to do that, the width we're going to measure from here to here. So the outside width from there to there. And we're just going to count those squares. So it's 8 over. And then the height we're going to go from the bottom, so right here, up to the top of the ears right there. And we're going to count to... 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, looks like 13. Okay, uh, the school plans on enlarging the character and painting it on the side of an athletic building. They need to enlarge it by a scale factor of 15. Um, what is the width of this new fantastic Felix drawing? So, um, so you need to multiply the original width, which was 8. Remember, this is width over height. So 8 times 15, 
which is 120. And the height will be the original height, 13 times 15, which is, I think it's 305. Better check that. Oh, I was way out. Huh. 195. Um, so make a proportion using the drawing of feelings width to height to the drawing of fantastics feelings width to height. Um, so 8 over 13 equals 120 over 195. So how do the areas compare? All right, we want to know how many times larger the new area is. Okay, to figure that out, um, since it's a little harder to figure out what the area of Felix is, we could actually, you know, try and count these squares and see. Um, but this is where our idea comes. We know if we increase the length and the width, both by 15, the area will be 15 times greater in length. 15 times greater in width, which means 225 times greater in area. All right, so go ahead and summarize what you learned here and uh, you can go ahead and start on the homework now. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. See you later.